Sensei, what do you think makes a good teacher? Ooh, such a good, hard question to answer. Like, what does it make, what makes someone a good teacher? That's really hard because, you know, in the old days, when you asked a, a traditional teacher what their qualifications were, they would just say, kibishi, strict. I am strict. Mm -hmm. That is your, that was the only qualification a teacher would sit, use in terms of how good of a teacher they were because the student needs the teacher to be strict, not the teacher to be nice. Right. You know, it's very difficult when you think about what makes someone a good Aikido teacher. They talk about like this idea that it's like two arrows being shot across a river. Mm, I remember the story. And that they're to hit. And it's like the odds of them hitting are like... Very low. Very, very low. And so, but that's like that thing where the teacher and the student are supposed to hit and connect. And it takes a long time for the student to connect with the teacher. You know, like the... T and the funny thing is that like a teacher... The sad thing about uh, being a teacher is that the teacher never gets to choose their, their students. Student. Right. The student has to choose the teacher. And then the teacher also doesn't get to dictate how long the student stays with him or her. People, not even at this table, that would say um, to be a really great Aikido teacher, you have to be a great Aikidoist. And some people would say you don't necessarily have to be a great Aikidoist. And the same thing in, in other teaching, like whether you're teaching French or whatever it is. That, or let's just say you're a track coach. Let's just make it very bland. Like you don't have to be the fastest 100-yard dasher to be a great 100-yard dash coach. Like obviously, yeah. like Usain Bolt has a coach, and that coach can't beat Usain Bolt. In the martial arts, it's not the same way. Like you, you know, like you said, you can you can have a bad. You could be have been a a track. Um, not star, but you could have been a person who did track and field and then been mediocre at it, but be then become, go on to be a great coach. But the martial arts is not like that. Mm -hmm. Because Explain that. You can only become, you can only recreate what you are. Mm. So if you're not a very good Aikidoist or martial arts teacher, you're not going to make a very good martial artist. However, I have seen bad teachers with good students and good, stu good teachers with bad students. So let, let's play that out a little bit. So like, like, what, what does it look like when you have a, a teacher that's not that great who has really good students? What's, what do you think the dynamic is that's going on there? I don't really know. I don't know if it, they're a buddy-buddy and the, you know, they feel like the, the teacher is a father figure or a mother figure or if the student themselves are very good. I'm not really sure. Where, you know, like we used to go to this dojo overseas where the teacher wasn't very good at all, mm -hmm. but the students were very disciplined, more disciplined than they are at, at this dojo. And I mm -hmm. was like, wow, look at that. But then you watch the person, the teacher do Aikido, and you're like, eh, that person's like barely first degree black belt, even though they're higher ranked than that. So like, it's just such an interesting thing when you think about like, what is it, what makes a good teacher? Well, they should be technically proficient. oriented or proficient. They should have some type of mental proficiency. They should have some teaching ability proficiency. They should have experience. They should have a good lineage. You know, mm. what other things do you think they should, a person should have, right? It's really hard. And then they all have to mesh in that moment. Be lineage is kind of, is it really important? I'm not really sure, especially in, the, in this video, internet, YouTube day and age. But later on, if you think about like, okay, technical ability. So if you didn't study teaching in a, in a college, at the college level, how, are you a good teacher? I guess you can still be a good teacher. Right. Right. If you, if you're not a very good Aikidoist, if you're not, if I'm not a very good Aikidoist, then my eye is not developed in an Aikido way. How do you transmit it? So how do you look at things and go, Bill, your foot is in the wrong position when I, I am not very good at it anyways. Right. So yeah. it's a very difficult thing. Track and field, you know, you're, they're timing you, they're looking at your step, they're photographing it with a um, high-speed camera, breaking it down. Oh, you're dropping your foot one-tenth of a degree here, and then they do something. That's, that's sports performance, mm. right? But this is something where you're trying to, trying to fix a problem with, like, 100 students in a room. And then you're trying to teach them what is the essence of this technique? What is the every technique has se uh, several different mechanisms which could make it work, depending on your level, body size, rank, and all these different things. 
So you have to be aware of all of them. So when I go up to a guy who's uh, six foot eight and having trouble with the technique and I'm five, four and a half and I go, this is what you're doing wrong and this is how you fix it. So, yeah, I mean, that's interesting because I mean, at that level to be able to teach, you have to have a very uh, sophisticated understanding of the biomechanics of right. Aikido technique. So really, you know, it, it comes down to like, if, if you could live the way, right, the, the way is physical, it's mental, it's emotional, it's spiritual, it's all those things that you're going to try to impart. It's very difficult. So really what you're trying to do is to develop a template, a template within the student that they know to follow these, these certain right and wrong things as they learn to develop themselves and figure out who they are. So you say the template is um, certain techniques, certain times, certain things, you do those things, certain ways to think, right? Because what is, what is the goal of graduate school? Do you know what the goal of graduate school is? As a lawyer, what was the goal of, be, of, of going to law school? What does it teach well, you? Well, I mean, when you go to law school, what they tell you is pretty clearly, they tell you that going to law school is to, is to um, teach you how to think like a lawyer. Exactly. So when you go to graduate school for Aikido or law or anything, they're teaching you how to think like an Aikido yes. teacher. Yeah. Right? So that you look at things, you go, oh, it's like this. So you can't really go with this idea of, of only going about it based on what someone says. Yeah. So that's why they have to give you this template that you internalize and then you kind of lay it over things and you go, okay, that's how I developed that. Oh, the philosophy of Aikido is nonviolence. So then what does nonviolence mean for me? I mean, I could just say the stuff that Fru since he said, mm -hmm. but then I'm not, I, I'm not speaking from the own. heart. Yeah. And that I don't really know what that is. And so as you develop yourself mentally and emotionally, you learn how to become proficient. That that, that comes from part of the teaching is um, create, teachers, you've done it, for instance, they did it, creating this space where people want to learn. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Like if you, you know, all the books that we read, right, they teach us how to look at a certain thing that we didn't really know how to look at it, you know? Or like when Fruit Sensei would talk about a certain thing, like you're like, blah, 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 sword. Right. And then he shows you something and you're like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then you become interested in that, right? So that's the same thing, that like the teacher gives you this idea. Right. And then you, that, that spreads through it you like a wildfire. Yeah, yeah. And it resonates with you and you go, oh, have you read this book? You read the books, you're just like, oh my God. You know, and so... There's that, it's that little thing yeah. that the teacher gives you. And it does, so you have to be technically proficient. You should be mentally and emotionally, spiritually Still. proficient. Yeah. But really, it's the thing that the teacher gives you an idea. So, really, you know, it, it comes down to like if, if you could live the way, right? The, the way is physical, it's mental, it's emotional, it's spiritual. It's all those things that you're going to try to impart. It's very difficult. 